Do you wish to optimize your business performance? Data is a crude oil. Analytics is a refinery. Demystify statistical data analysis. Gather critical information from your data. Generate easy to digest descriptive executive reports. Derive insights to formulate informed policies. Make evidence-based and transformative decisions. Further empower your executives to fortify your business through data analytics corporate training. Steve Mbugua Doidi is a business and data analytics consultant specializing in data analytics corporate training and consultancy, and also offers tutorials for individuals and groups pursuing quantitative analysis, QA, in Masters in Business Administration, MBA, Masters in Economics, MA Con, Masters in Public Policy and Management, MPPM. Online and face-to-face -face arrangements are available. For more information, email swyinspire at gmail.com, call or WhatsApp plus 254-784-572829. Steve is also an author and motivational speaker as well as a minister of the word of God for week today. So welcome to our teaching of today. My name is Stephen Bugua Toidi from the Archdiocese of Mombasa, Kenya. Today I want to talk about choices. Holy orders, so the sacrament of holy orders as know your faith, part five. You know, when I was thinking about this topic and the choice of uh, the topic, choices, I really thought about our normal lifestyle. You know, like when you go to a butchery, you actually find that there's a meat that they are cutting from, the big chunk, and then there are some special chunks that they've already cut, selected. And most of the time you select from the selection. That means you select from the pieces that have already been selected. You know, the steaks, the yummy ones. You are getting the best from the selection. That is, is a choices. You're selecting the best from the choices that are already made. Or maybe if you look at it from a point of view of uh, dating, Maybe those who are in courtship or when you are in courtship. You know, normally if you are planning for a date, you go to your clothes and you have a selection of clothes and from the selection you select the best. The best of the best. That is what we call choices. The best of the best. When you come to the kingdom of God, even in the kingdom of God, we have what we call the best of the best. And I totally believe that at the heart of God, at the very heart of God, is the priesthood and the religious. At the very heart. They've been set apart, especially the priesthood, to serve God's people in an amazing way. You know? And no wonder that Jesus, when he was talking about uh, divorce and clarifying what Moses had allowed, you know, when the Jews were asking, how can Moses allow the divorce? Jesus made it clear that he only allowed it because of the hardness of their hearts. But it was never the plan of God. You can read that in Matthew 19 from verse 4 and following. But I'm going to read from verse 10. After explaining that there's basically no divorce, what God has put together, no man should separate. And it's about one man and one woman. The disciples say to Jesus, verse 10, 
if this is how it is between a man and his wife, it is better not to marry. Jesus answered, this teaching does not apply to everyone, but only to those whom God has given it. The teaching about not being able to marry, giving yourself totally to God, is a special grace that has been given to a few people, the ones that God has chosen. I read again. His disciples say to him, If this is how it is between a man and his wife, it is better not to marry. Jesus answered, This teaching does not apply to everyone, but only to those to whom God has given it. So there are few people who have, give, who have been given this grace to be able to lead that life, to be able to lead a life of celibacy, and they are chosen few. So when people tell me, or I hear people saying, how crazy they are about God, how much they love Jesus. I can only tell you that you truly love him and you're a young person, a young girl, a young boy, and you truly love God. The only way that you can confirm that claim that you love him 100% is by giving your whole love to him. Forgo other men, other women, and you will convince me that you love him 100%. Otherwise, our love is normally divided. We who are married, our love is shared. We love God, yes, but we love our wives. We love our spouses. So, you know, even when I look at the, at the Protestant world and people claim that they really love God, if they really love him, we would be having pastors who don't marry, who are giving their lives totally to God. Not because they are deficient in anything, but because they love him and they give him love in totality. That's why Jesus is saying it's only given to a few. And that's why I'm talking about priesthood being at the heart of God. Jesus went on to explain, verse 12, for there are different reasons why men cannot marry. Some, because they were born that way. Others, because men made them that way. And others do not marry for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Others don't marry for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. You can imagine foregoing everything, foregoing marriage, for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. This is not little. This is huge. So he goes on to say, let him who can accept this teaching do so. Let him who can accept. Many people can't accept it. Even those who claim we are really saved, they can't accept it. Because it is too much giving. Giving your, yourself totally to God. You know, saying I will not be married. I will not marry for the sake of the kingdom. It is not little. It is something big. So we should never take the priesthood and religious for granted. People have given their lives totally to God. It is a major sacrifice. In the Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 1579 to 1580 and number 1599, it says, it is always necessary to be celebrated for the episcopacy. For the priesthood in the Latin Church, men who are practicing Catholics and celebrate are chosen. Men who intend to continue to live a celibate life for the kingdom of heaven, like Matthew 19, 12 tells us. In the Eastern churches, marriage is not permitted after one has been ordained. Married men can be ordained to the permanent diaconate. If you are married, you can be ordained to the permanent diaconate, but not to the priesthood. A priest or two, or let me even say 10 or 20, who are not living their celibate, their celibacy vow, does not make the requirement a nullity. It does not nullify the requirement. There are those priests and religious sisters who are living their vows, given by God, and we thank them, congratulate them, and pray for them to continue living, and to also pray for the others so they can also live this celibacy, what they vow to God, because God does not lie. It is possible. I've heard many people say, why should it be removed? God cannot say something which is an impossibility because possibility is not by our strength, it's by the grace of God. Jesus, in his own words, in Luke 16, 13, confirms the importance of serving God in totality, giving your love totally to him by saying, no servant can, can, no servant can be the slave of two masters. Such a servant will hate one and love the other or will be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. It is the same for family life. We who are in the family life, we who are married can for sure tell you that marriages are not beds of roses. There are many challenges. And when you are married and you are the one who is leading a church, sometimes you will come with the challenges of your family to the church. 
And that is the reason why God is saying, for those who can accept celibacy, let them go for it because it is the best. So that you're able to give yourself totally to God. What is the sacrament of holy orders? Again, if you check in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 1536, it says, it is a sacrament through which the mission entrusted by Christ to his apostles continues to be exercised in the church until the end of time. It is a sacrament through which the mission entrusted to, by Christ to his apostles continues to be exercised in the church until the end of time. So holy orders has been in the, in the salvation master plan of God from the Old Testament. Again, in the same catechism, number 1539 to 1546, number 1590, 1591, you can get that the sacrament was prefigured in the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament, in the service of the Levites, in the priesthood of Aaron, and in the, in the institution of the 70 elders, as they were chosen by Moses in Numbers 11.25. This prefiguration, continues to say the catechism, this prefiguration finds their fulfillment in Christ Jesus, who by the sacrifice of the cross is the one mediator between God and man. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5. The high priest according to the order of Melchizedek, Hebrew 5.10. The one priesthood of Christ is made present in the ministerial priesthood. According to St. Thomas of Aquinas, only Christ is the true priest the others being only ministers, ministerial priesthood. But Christ is the only true priest, the high priest, in the order of Melchizedek. So holy orders are in different degrees. And again, in the Catechism of the Catholic Faith, 1554 and 1593, you'll find that the sacrament of holy orders is composed of three degrees, which are replaceable for the organic structure of the church. The episcopate, the presbyterate, and the diaconate. Those are the three degrees. So like I said earlier, priests are set apart for service in the kingdom of God. Numbers 18 from verse 20 to 24. Numbers 18 from verse 20 to 24. The Lord said to Aaron, You will not receive any property that can be inherited. No part of the land of Israel will be assigned to you. I, the Lord, am all you need. So God is confirming to Aaron, and the Levites then, the priesthood of today, that they are not meant to be inheriting from their father's land, from our tribal lands, from our people's land. They were not getting anything from the, what belongs to the Israelite. The Lord says, I am all you need. All that the priests need is the Lord, because they have given themselves totally to the Lord. They are dedicated to him. They've been set apart to serve God's people. So what belongs to the Lord is what belongs to them. Verse 24, I'm just jumping some verses. Verse 24 says, Because I've given to them as their position, the tithes which the Israelites present to me as a special contribution. That is why I told them that they would have no permanent property in Israel. Because they've been set apart. We are seeing this continuing with the apostles. Their work being well cut out. On Holy Thursday, Luke 22, verse 19, 20. The Lord Jesus took a piece of bread gave thanks to God, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in memory of me. They have been given work to offer the Eucharist, to bring down Christ to men and women. A special position, very special. No one else can pray, and bread and wine turns to become the body and blood of Jesus. Only the priest, he has that anointing, because he has been set apart. No wonder the celibacy, no wonder these high stakes, no wonder these high degrees that are meant to be. Verse 20, in the same way, he gave them the cup after the supper, saying, This cup is God's new covenant, sealed with my blood, which is poured out for you. Again, he reminds them to do this in memory of him. So we need the priest dedicated to the work of God. If they are going to be dedicated to the word of God, at the same time serving in their families, some of these duties will not go right. That's the reason why they undertake this major sacrifice. And I repeat, the fact that maybe I've seen one priest or two or three or ten not follow it correctly does not make it to be an analogy, to be, to be nullified. No, God has already spoken it. There are those who've been created for that. God has given them the grace to be able to surrender everything for the sake of the kingdom. 
In John 13, verses 12 to 15, we are seeing after Jesus had washed their feet again on Holy Thursday, he put his outer garment back on and returned to his place at the table. Do you understand what I've just done? He asked. You call me teacher and Lord, and it is right that you do so, because that is what I am. I, your Lord and teacher, have just washed your feet. You then should wash one another's feet. I have set an example for you, so that you will do just what I have done for you. Again, Jesus here confirms the importance. He has called the twelve, put them aside. He has taught them. He has been with them, worked miracles. We know that they left everything and followed him. Left everything and followed him. And here he's telling them, you've seen me do service and you are going to serve. And yet again he's telling them, you cannot serve God and mammon. That's why the dedication is very important. That's why the love, if you're saying you really love God, you need to give yourself totally to God. That's the reason why I really salute the priests who are living their vows of obedience, poverty and chastity. And the religious brothers and sisters who are living this world because it is not easy. It's a major sacrifice. And you and me, we are called to pray for them. Seriously pray for them. Because they have sacrificed so much for the sake of the kingdom of God. Let's pray for them so they don't get caught again by the trap of the world. What they sacrificed and left to go back to that. We really need to pray for our priests. It's a major sacrifice and the devil is never happy. When they give themselves totally to God, the devil will try and do everything to return them back to the ways of the world. So we really need to pray for our priests and religious. They've been washed their feet and they've been told, go do the same. So really they've been directly commissioned to come and serve God people, but not serve mammon. Not serving the families. They've been set apart from families to dedicate their time, their life and everything to God. And they partake from that which belongs to God. They are not meant to be working because we are meant to be giving our tithes and offering. So they can survive on that because the portion, the portion that belongs to God is their portion, according to the word of God. There are special duties to offer the Eucharistic sacrifice, the blood of Jesus, the body of Jesus, doing it in memory of Jesus, in the person of Christ. In John chapter 20, verses 19, 23, again we are seeing another amazing duty for these people who are dedicated. It was after Jesus has died and resurrected. And I read, it was late that Sunday evening and the disciples were gathered together behind locked doors. They were afraid of the Jews because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities. Then Jesus came and stood among them. Peace be with you, is the first thing he's telling them. Because they are afraid, he's giving them his peace. Not the peace as is given by the world, but the peace that is coming from God himself. Verse 20. After saying this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy at seeing the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I send you. Special mission, special commissioning for these people who have been dedicated to God, who have been set aside for God, who have left everything. Remember when one time Peter was saying, we have left our wives because that some of them were married already. We have left our everything, our property. We are coming to serve you. What are we going to get? And the Lord said, all that you lost, you're going to get a hundredfold here on earth and eternal life. So here he gives them peace. These people were dedicated now to serve him. And he says in verse 22, then he breathed on them and say, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive people's sins, they are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, they are not forgiven. An amazing amount of power to this dedicated group, to these people who forgone everything for the sake of the kingdom. They're even given the power to forgive sins. Given the power to forgive sins. It's an amazing power. Many people say that they cannot go to a human being to be forgiven sins. And, they yet, and yet they call themselves Christians. Here it is Christ himself giving this power to the priesthood after being with them, teaching them, dedicating them. Holy Thursday, washing their feet, sending them to serve, initiating the Eucharistic celebration, and tell them to do the same in memory of him, giving them the power to go and forgive sins. An amazing feat. No one in this world, no president, no prime minister, no politician, no rich man or woman is able to forgive sins, leave alone other people's sins, their own sins. The only person given this power to forgive sins is the priesthood, the holy orders again dedicated all the way 
descend from heaven, given power and authority by Jesus himself. Whoever sins you forgive, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive their sins, they are not forgiven. I always tell Christians, take these words for granted at your own peril. Why well, believe every other word of God, but not these straightforward words of Jesus? They've been given the power to forgive sins. You can never take it away from them because you didn't give them the power. They are given straight by Jesus himself who has come to die for us. And this is after dying and resurrecting. Many people say that when Jesus died, the curtain separated. We got the power and permission to go direct. Yes, but in accordance with the will of God. And for sins and especially mortal sins, I know no other way. I'm here to be shown. Apart from going to this sacrament, whose power was given to priests to be able to forgive sins and be able to institute the Eucharist, celebrate the Eucharist for us. Holy orders, amazing. And even when at one time, if you read Acts 6, verse 1 to 7, when there was a lot of work, when Christianity was growing, and many people were coming to this family of Christ, and some widows were complaining about ration, and I read from verse 1 to 7, Sometime later, as the numbers of disciples kept growing, there was a quarrel between the Greek-speaking Jews and the native Jews. The Greek-speaking Jews claimed that their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution of funds and foods. So the 12 apostles called the whole group of believers together and said, It is not right for us to neglect the preaching of God's word in order to handle finances, in order to handle racial food. It is not right for the holy orders, for the priesthood, to stop preaching the word of God, to go and deal with finances. This is the early church. This is the first pope, the 12 apostles, saying to us even today, it is not right. You know, nowadays we've almost turned the tables upside down. Almost rationing has become more important than the word of God. But he's telling us clearly, it is not right for us to neglect the preaching of God's word in order to handle finances. I don't believe that priests were set aside because of finances. They were set aside because of ministering to the people of God. Preaching, teaching the word of God, praying for the people of God, offering masses, serving us as Jesus washed their feet. It's a very special duty, but sometimes you can lose it because of the thinking of the world. If the priests will start thinking like the people of the world, then they are going to lose their holy orders. You know, whatever it was meant to be, we might lose it. So let's really pray for the child so we don't lose it and go back to what Christ intended to be. Verse 3. So then, Peter and the apostles are saying, Brothers and sisters, choose seven men among you who are known to be full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, and we will put them in charge of these matters. We ourselves then will give our full time to prayer and the work of preaching. Two of the main duties of priesthood is prayer and preaching. Prayer and and teaching the word of God. The Eucharist is prayer. You know, the body and blood of Christ to energize the people of God. The sacrament of penance and reconciliation. I want to believe these are the main duties. They are all in around this area of prayer and preaching the word of God. Reaching soul. There are so many souls that are being lost. This should be the main focus of the church and the priesthood of the holy orders. And they selected these men like they requested. The whole group was pleased with the apostles' proposal. So they chose Stephen, my namesake, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, and Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicolaus, a gentle, a gentile from Antioch who had earlier been converted to Judaism. The group presented them to the apostles who praised them, who prayed and placed their hands on them, made them diacon, the deacons. This is the diaconate. Still in the holy orders. And so the word of God continued to spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem grew larger and larger. And a great number of priests accepted the faith. Those who were in Judaism, they came to Christianity. The church was growing. And no wonder the faith was able to reach us. But remember the words of Peter. Remember the seriousness. That we should concentrate on preaching and teaching the word of God. Not on finances, not on food rations, but preaching and teaching the word of God. That is the main purpose of the holy orders in my little understanding. Prayer, Eucharist, confessions, teaching the word of God. And the other men and women should come in to support. We should be there with all faithfulness. The men who were selected were full of the Holy Spirit and faith. They were trustworthy men. 
people who don't take bribes or cannot be bribed. People are not going to steal the, the offertory. You know, the priests sometimes come to do this other work because we are not trusted. We steal even the offertory. That's why they forget what they are meant to do. They come and try to control the finances. May God have mercy on us. We have fall, all failed in one way or another as Christians. We've fallen short of the glory of God, moving to rationing and making our priests move to rationing because faithfulness is lost in our society today. So today we need to pray so much because the world is lost. And when the world is lost, like Hosea says, God's people are perishing for lack of knowledge. And when God's people are perishing for lack of knowledge, the biggest blame, if you're not aware, goes back to the priests. Because they're the ones who've taken the holy orders, the sacrament of holy orders. They are the ones who've been set apart to serve God's people. They are the ones who are meant to be giving us the knowledge and understanding. Let me read Hosea chapter 4, verse 4 to 9. And then you can hear what the Lord says. When he's talking about his people are getting lost. The Lord says, let no one accuse the people or reprimand them. My complaint is against you, priests. Let no one accuse the people or reprimand them. My complaint is against you, priests. Verse 4. So he, he blames them most because they've been given the most, they, at the heart of God, the most important place in the heart of God, in the space of God, in the kingdom of God. So when the people are getting lost, he's going to blame them because they are the ones who are meant to be receiving directly and releasing to us. Verse 5. Day and night you blunder on. He's blaming the priests. And the prophets do no better than you. I am going to destroy Israel, your mother. My people are doomed because they do not acknowledge me. They are perishing for lack of knowledge. You priests have refused to acknowledge me and have rejected my teaching. And so I reject you. I will not acknowledge your sons as my priests. The more of you priests there are, the more you sin against me. And so I'll turn your honor into disgrace. You grow rich from the sins of my people. And so you want them to sin more and more. You will suffer the same punishment as the people. I'll punish you and make you pay for the evil you do. So God is giving a warning. The holy orders is a very special place. But let's treat it with the respect they deserve. We as Christians need to respect the priests in an amazing way. Because God has put them close to his heart. Holy orders are at the heart of God. We need to respect the priests in an amazing way. We need to pray for them, respect them, and be there to support them in the kingdom of God, in the work of God. But the priests too, the ones in holy orders too, they need to respect themselves and the high calling. Surely they need to. It's a high calling. Deacons the same. Religious brothers and sisters the same. You have surrendered your life. Say you're not going to be married. No man is going to touch you. Let no man touch you. Let no woman touch your priest. Live for Christ. You know, like in, in, in marriage, when a wife is dishonest to the husband or the husband is dishonest to the wife, he's going out of wedlock. The other spouse, partner, feels like he's being stabbed at the back. When you do it to Christ, you're actually stabbing Christ. Not even stabbing a human being, stabbing Christ. So holy orders is a very special place in the kingdom of God. And as you pray for the holy orders, that the priests and religious can live a holy life. Let's also pray for us married men and women that we should strive to live for God. Live to impress God and not impress other women and men. Live holy married lives. Those who are single, live holy single lives for Christ. The youthfulness. Those who are youth, let your youthfulness be for Christ. Give it to Christ. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 12 to 16. He's talking to the youth. St. Paul, in this letter to this young man called Timothy. And he says, Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to public reading of scripture, to preaching and teaching. This is the work for the youth. They are being told what to do. Do not neglect your gift, which was given you through prophecy, when the body of elders laid their hands on you. Be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them, so that everyone may see your progress. Watch your life and doctrine closely. Preserve, persevere in them, because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. So it's not only for the old. It's not only for the priests. It's not only for the married men and women. It's for all of us. Christians, you are meant to be leading holy lives that are pleasing to God. So today, let's pray for holiness. 
for even the young men and women to live totally for God, to love God. And let's pray for more priests and, and deacons coming out of our youth, more religious men and women coming, over, coming out of our boys and girls, that they should give themselves totally. They should not just say that we love God and they can't love him totally. There are those who are dedicated to God, but peer pressure is pushing them away from priesthood. Their lifestyle today is pushing them away. They think that being a religious sister is outdated. They think that being a religious priest is outdated, that there's no money. It's not about money. Money, you will leave it. Even the rich die. And they leave everything here. You'll still die. So if God has called you into priesthood or being a religious sister, please surrender to God. Because there are those who have been chosen and given the grace of celibacy. Go for it. Let's pray for holy Christianity. Christians to live their Christian vows. To live for God. To transform so we can be used by God to transform our families, the church, the nation, and the world. Let us pray. Heavenly Lord and King, I want to thank you for your love and your kindness. Thank you for the sacrament of holy orders, choices, the very best at your heart, God. May you help our priests and the deacons, Almighty God, to live for you. Their vows of poverty, obedience, celibacy, may they live it, God. Those who have been bound by the enemy, God, may you set them free from these bondages. Cleanse them with your blood. Protect them from all evil and all anxiety. Release your power upon them so that they can leave their vows for you. Because you have treasured them. You've lifted them high. You put them close to your heart. Very special place from the Old Testament today. May they live for you so that they can teach us, direct us in ways that are pleasing to you. And for the laity, men and women, may we live our marriage vows and our Christian vows in accordance with your holy will. For the youth, God, help them not to, not to, to give into the peer pressure, to give into the ways of the world, but to trust you and live for you. So that here on earth, God, you can bless us, heal us, deliver us, protect us. And at the end of time, we all be in heaven after having done the work, the ministry that you've called us to do successfully. Eventually be with you, enjoy with you in your delightful presence forever and ever. In Jesus' name I pray, trust and believe. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you'd wish to continue receiving this every Saturday teachings, and the ones in a while weekday reflections, and some of the live audience teachings now, and more, subscribe to this YouTube channel, Steve Wayesu, by clicking on the subscription button and then ensure to also click on the notification bell to get a notification message on your phone as soon as a presentation is uploaded. See you in the next teaching. God is in control and he loves you dearly. Stay blessed always. Bye-bye.